Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's down and dirty is how to operate rollers. And today we are on a sheep's foot. Uh, it's a single drum roller, but at the same time, all the concepts we're gonna talk about today pretty much apply to most rollers. Uh, number one, as you see, I always recommend you wear your seatbelt on a roller because most rollers are gonna be open cab. There's not a whole lot of guarding to keep you in the cab if this thing were to go over. And generally speaking, in dirt, you know, in the dirt world, uh, you're not necessarily on even surfaces. So you are a little more prone to a tipping situation. So the first thing I wanted to cover is kind of some of the basic controls. Um, this is a, a sheep's foot. We have a blade on the front. That's what this pedal operates. Most of the time you're not going to have that, especially if you're on obviously like a double drum roller or something like that. Uh, smooth drum rollers generally don't have a blade on them. So we're going to ignore that and pretend it's not there. Your main control on a roller is going to be your forward and reverse selector. And then on the top there will generally be a button uh, that will be your vibrator turn you know, on and off switch. Um, I know on other rollers you also have other buttons that can do functions on the screen uh, where you can go in and look at different density numbers, you can go in and look at engine parameters and all that stuff on your screen. And a lot of times that will be on buttons that are on your joystick as well. On smooth drum rollers, generally you'll also have your water controls. So you'll have a, a front drum sprayer and a rear drum sprayer that will both be operated by push button. That's only used in asphalt applications. We don't use those in the dirt world. So some general concepts here. Uh, you're gonna have your parking brake on and off here. Your emergency stop, you're just gonna slam that down. You've got your horn. Right here is your throttle button. Uh, Rollers are, are pretty much entirely hydraulically operated, so you don't have kind of a, a range throttle selector. It's generally an on-off. You have a turtle mode or idle mode, and then you have a rabbit mode or high-speed mode. Uh, unless you're just leisurely moving around, like if we wanted to go fill this thing up and move closer to the truck, uh, that's about the only time you're going to run this thing in idle. Every other situation when you're actually doing work, you're going to be in high-speed mode. The next thing we have uh, in all honesty, I'd have to read. I don't know what that switch does. That actually probably, if I had to guess, changes one of your parameters on the screen here, but I'd have to get into the manual for that. This is your turtle mode and rabbit mode selector. So uh, when you're transporting this machine, you can throw it into rabbit mode for your transmission, and this is gonna haul balls down the site. But when you're actually rolling, you do wanna go pretty slow and methodical, so we're gonna leave that in turtle mode. The next thing we have is what's called your amplitude selection. So there are two settings uh, on most rollers. This is a dirt sheep's foot roller, so it doesn't have the other setting, which we'll talk about in a second. I know I'm kind of all over the place. Amplitude is how hard it hits. So you generally on rollers, you will have a low amplitude and a high amplitude. One is gonna hit really, really hard, and one of them is gonna hit a little bit lighter. Uh, generally speaking, in the dirt world, we always use, now I have to think about this, I believe it is the high amplitude. So you want it to hit harder, whatever that is. I'm, I don't remember physics and all that stuff to remember which is which. But whichever one hits harder, generally you're going to use in the dirt world. Um, possibly when you're doing some stone finish work or asphalt, you would use your lower amplitude, I believe. That's actually, if there are any roller experts out there, that's a question I've had for years. Uh, as well as the, the setting on the other thing you can adjust on rollers, which is frequency. That's how fast it's hitting. So if we had a very low frequency, it might hit, and this is super exaggerated, it's never gonna go this slow, but it might go boom, 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 boom. And if you had a high frequency, it's boom, 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 boom. That's frequency adjustment. And from what I understand, if you hit the right frequency for the right material, you can kind of create a resonance that helps the material settle into place. I have yet to find anyone on any job site anywhere that can answer when and how you kind of determine what frequency you should hit at. This machine does not have frequency adjustment, it only has amplitude adjustment, and that's what this button is here. Uh, we also have, this is, let me explain, and I apologize, this is a little lengthy. So when you're running a roller, Generally speaking, a general rule of thumb is you always vibrate forward and you dead roll back. And the reason you do that is because there is a weight that spins inside the drum. This thing doesn't have a hammer that bounces up and down. There's a weight that spins and that's what creates the vibration. The weight spins in a forward rotation, which means the drum kind of hits forward. 
So what happens is if you vibrate going forward as you hit, it kind of nudges the material forward and then you roll over it, which further compacts it. If you're vibrating on the way back, you're vibrating, you're pushing, you're nudging that material forward, but then you're moving backwards so you're not actually rolling over it. So you can actually loosen the material if you're vibrating backwards. So overall, when you're running a roller, you generally want to um, vibrate forward and dead roll back. Dead rolling is the term that you use when you're rolling without vibration on. That being said, we use our on off switch to take care of when we turn our vibrator on and off. You don't wanna vibrate when you change directions because what happens if you think about your vibrating, 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 when you transfer from forward to reverse, you sit in one spot for a second while the machine changes direction. Well, if you have your vibrator on, you've just pounded a divot right in your grade. So you always wanna click your vibrator off before you come to a stop, come to a stop, reverse direction. And then if you are gonna vibrate going backwards, then you would restart your vibrator. Same when you go from uh, reverse to forward. You always wanna stop your vibration. That brings us to this switch here. We have it in manual control mode where it is always gonna vibrate until I hit this switch and turn it off. We can flip it over to auto, and what will happen is if you go slow enough and come out of, let's say we were full forward, if we slowly come out of forward to neutral, the machine will detect that, it will turn off the vibrator on its own, and then it will fire the vibrator back up once we are going in reverse. There's two reasons I don't ever use that function. First is, like we just talked about, I only vibrate forward and dead roll back because that's the most efficient way to do it. The second reason I don't ever do it is because these things never seem to react fast enough, and so I always end up over, you know, I, I come out of forward too fast, and it's still vibrating as I come to a stop, which is like we just discussed, you don't wanna happen. So all that being said, let's go down here. We're gonna make some passes. The reason I'm doing this with the engine off is because this is a, this is a loud machine. So let me get set up and we will go make some passes and talk about the proper way to roll. So we'll catch you guys here in a second. All right guys, so we're gonna slowly work our way over to the area that we're gonna roll. And I'm hoping that you guys can hear me okay with the lav mic on. Um, when we make our passes, so what you generally do in a roller is you start on one side and then you will gradually work your way over to the other side. It's important to have a rolling pattern because you can actually roll an area too much and especially with stone, not so much with clay, but with stone you can break that material down and you will actually lose density because you're breaking the stone down. So you wanna have a roll pattern, you wanna start on one side, work your way to the other side, and if you don't get density, you will come back and work your way back to that side again, the original side you started on. You wanna overlap your passes by roughly half a drum width. So we'll make our first pass here, we'll back up, and then we're gonna move over about a half drum. And what that does is it's, let me shut our engine down here for just a second. So, and let me pull back so I'm not in Colton's way. So what happens is on our first pass, we're gonna compress the material. If we were to move over a full drum width, we would still compress the material about the same amount. But if we only move over a half drum width, that means that there's more weight because we're gonna kind of be on a slant because we haven't rolled this portion, we've rolled this portion. So our drum will be on a little bit of a slant. And so it's gonna put more force on the side that we haven't run over yet. So you'll get some more compaction out of your left side of the drum and you're gonna get a lot of compaction out of the right side of the drum. And as you do that with those overlapping passes, you get much tighter compaction, you can get to density much quicker. So we're gonna practice this. Another concept I wanna talk about is staying out of your dozer operator's way, especially when you're chasing him doing any sort of a finish grade. As you can see here, Colton is backing up almost even with me. If we roll this area and he backs up, to make his next pass, not only is he gonna mess with the grade that we've already rolled, but it's also, if he's using GPS, he will be at a different level because this is compacted versus non-compacted up there. It's gonna mess with the grade, it's not gonna come out nice and even. So you do wanna stay back enough that your dozer operator has a full length to back up to make his next pass, and that area is non-compacted. Once he moves forward to the next section, that's when you'll start rolling and get up tight to him again, staying back so that he can back up. So that's another important concept is you wanna stay relatively tight to your dozer operator 
but you don't want to be up his ass in his business. So let's do a couple passes here. So like we talk about, I am going to vibrate forward and I have my blade down a little bit just to kind of nudge some of this material. And you don't want to go super fast here. The key is to get compaction. It's not to just zip around. And I'm about to come to a stop, so I'm gonna turn my vibrator off. And now I'm gonna go switch to reverse. And because we're dead rolling back, it's okay to carry a little bit of speed. We're not so much concerned about sitting on it when we're dead rolling. We're gonna bump over our half drum width. We're gonna go forward and turn our vibrator on. I'm gonna get my blade down there just to kind of shave this a little bit. I'm gonna vibrate off and back up. Vibrate on. And you might ask yourself, what is a sheep's foot for? Why do we have the knobs on the drum? With stone, asphalt, other materials that bind well together, uh, you don't necessarily need to do anything to the material other than hammer it and put weight on it. With clay, as you guys are probably familiar, clay tends to kind of mush out. And so what the sheep's foot does is it actually kneads that material together and it really locks it in. And if you've ever been on a job site where they've used a sheep's foot, uh, you'll know that even in really, really soft materials, once you run a sheep's foot over it, it gets hard. And it's because of that kneading action you get with the sheep's foot. So that's why on dirt jobs you will see sheep's foot, but whenever it's stone or asphalt, it's going to be a smooth drum roller. As you can see, now what we're gonna do, I, I know Carson's still working that section, so we're not gonna go over. What I actually do in my personal rolling pattern is I go over this side one more time, and then we're gonna continue going back over to the other side using our half drum width. And that would be my roller pattern on this job. And then what would happen is you have your proctor guy come over, he gives you a density test, and from there you're gonna kinda get a feel for if that pattern works for you and you get density, great. That's the pattern you use for the rest of the job. If you're not quite there, you may have to come back. And you're gonna work with your proctor guy and he's gonna kinda help you figure out when you've got density and mentally you'll know, okay, I need to roll it in this pattern going back, forth, back, and I'll get density. And so that's generally speaking, in a very quick crash course, that's how to efficiently run a roller, stay out of everyone's way, but get the job done. So as always, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, absolutely drop them below, especially if someone can, if somewhere out there can answer my question as to how you should adjust the frequency on a roller. That would be super helpful, not only to me, but everyone else watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one.